your matchup Wednesday as the series in the ALCS resumes Wednesday in Arlington. Christian Javier going for the Houston Astros against Max Scherzer, who is pitching for the first time in a long time. For more, Matt Yaloff in Arlington. If Max Scherzer had his way, he would have been active for the ALDS. That's according to manager Bruce Bochy, but they chose to be cautious instead. The future Hall of Famer will get his shot on the mound when he starts game three of the ALCS. Postseason starts are precious. There's no one way to say about it. You're playing for a ring. Um, when you get to this point in the year, uh, like I said, this is what you dream of. This is all the sacrifices you make in your life, all the hard work you put throughout the offseason is to get to this moment, um, to get to this spot. So um, here we are. Well, I said this uh, a couple of days ago now. I'll stick with this right now. He threw 69 pitches facing hitters um, a week ago or so, you know, about six days ago. So that's the starting point. Obviously, we'll watch innings, how stressful they are, how he feels, uh, looking at the command uh, stuff, uh, velo, things like that. But he's been worked pretty good. So he, uh, he can get us uh, at least in that area, if not more. Meanwhile, the defending world champions are in a hole, and while the odds are not in their favor, there is no sign of panic. As Alex Bregman said, we just have to go pitch by pitch. I am not thinking about being down 3-0. That's the last thing on my mind. I mean, my, my, my mindset is to be down 2-1 to one and then be even two and two and then hopefully get the three and two and then hopefully get to the World Series. That's how, that's how my mind thinks. Well, here's one reason for Houston and his fans to be optimistic for game three here in Arlington. During this past season, the Astros were 21 games over 500 on the road while playing under 500 baseball in their own park. Yeah, he, Matt brings up a great point. The Astros are awful at home and have been all season, but, man, they are really good at, on the road, and they now have to deal with Max Scherzer. Now, Dan, Max Scherzer had a sim simulated game last week. Uh, what, what can you – what are you going to be well, looking for early in the Max Scherzer start Wednesday? I really don't know. Like, this would be like my grade report card when I was in grade school, right? Incomplete. Wow. When you're throwing it a – game like this a inner squad game or a simulated game you know it's not the same height and alert now you can see that he looks free and easy yeah he's spinning the breaking ball you can see Bruce Bochy and Mike Maddox the pitching yeah. coach they're watching right there but it's hard to really decipher you know what Max Scherzer we're going to see because you don't know like this is a controlled environment right and, and when you've had issues with the shoulder, you know, he's not going to go ahead and hurt himself in a simulated game. So he's probably getting right at that line to where, like, he's trying to let it go. But I'm, but I'm just going to be curious to see when he warms up before game three, the last couple of warm-ups, when he's got to really let this thing go. Yeah. And not hold back. He's got to let it go to see how his arm reacts and how it reacts after he pitches the first inning and sits back down and has to go back out there and True. do it again the second inning. So there's a lot of questions to me. I wouldn't doubt it. I don't know if this is going to be like his Willis Reed moment that he's going to come off the injured list. It's been over a month since he's pitched in a real game. Yes. So I don't know how sharp he's going to be, but I know one thing. He's got a lot of guile. He's got a lot of moxie. He'll probably figure some way out. Now, Anthony, uh, obviously there's some uncertainty here with Max Scherzer, but if you're the Rangers, there's some good news. Obviously, you have a 2-0 lead. And two, you do have some options if for some reason Max has to be removed early or doesn't go as long as they had hoped or expected. Absolutely. I think that's the one thing that Bruce Bochy knows that he has behind this. It's He can go to Martin Perez. He can go to Andrew Haney. He can go to Dane Dunning. He can go to John Gray. I mean, uh, you know, depending on who they decide is the game for starter, they have a plethora of options that can eat up innings for you. So if this starts to get out of hand, they can go there. If, yeah. if Even if Max just looked great – one, through, one time through the lineup and you just want to, you know what, let's get him out of there. Let's have him ready for this next yeah. start, whatever it is, and you can go to that next starter. They're, they can do anything they want with the pitching staff they have, with that depth they have in the starting rotation. And then, of course, the way their bullpen, the back end has pitched so far, 
they can go to that whenever they need to as well. The uh, the opposition on the mound uh, will have Christian Javier, nicknamed El Reptil, the reptile, because he is just cool and calm throughout every postseason start. He's only had three of them, but these are his numbers in his three postseason starts dating back to last year for Javier. 16 and third, two hits, but 10 walks. I submit to you, Anthony, he can't walk five batters like he did here against the Twins against this Rangers lineup. I completely agree. You cannot put free base runners on the base paths with the damage that this Texas lineup has one through nine. They can get you one through nine. So you cannot to be too fine. You cannot try to pitch around everyone. I will say I wouldn't pitch to Corey Seager. That guy is on another <laughs> planet. He has been. Jordan Alvarez is the same. If I'm the managers, I'm saying those two guys can't beat me. But at, even with that, the way that lineup, you know, runs through one through nine, anybody can get you at any given moment. And so to me, Javier has got to be on his game. He has got to be throwing strikes and he is, cannot allow any free passes. One of the things he needs, he throws that invisible fastball. You look at the radar gun, it's 93 to 95, but it plays up to 98, 99. If he's getting swings and misses early on that elevated fastball, he has a chance to stay around for a while. Uh, for whatever this is worth, the Astros were six and one against the Rangers at that ballpark. What that means, I have no idea because the Astros have been such a weird team for a variety of reasons, but we'll see.